uh, we want to get you into a, a clothing that really fits out here. These are uh, wool tunics. And it'll really make the experience feel different to just staying like this. Yeah. The other way is just go butt naked. Yes. But that's no. a big challenge yeah, right at first. No way. So. No way. Any sort of trousers, or is this it? Is this acting as Yeah, the... I don't think you need trousers. Yeah, you want them nuts hanging down. And, and then these guys, thumb's gonna go. Yeah, there you go. Feel good? Yeah, yeah. He's got proper freedom, what he's doing. Does what he wants, wears what he wants. He doesn't have uh, undies on or anything under that. He lets his bollocks swing. And he said, today's life is all about having your nuts squeezed, even with the clothing. And then you're just going to kip yourself up. But he's right. Even boxers without jeans on or anything, or them pants, I, I am feeling really free and relaxed. And I, I'm aware I've got bollocks there. Normally, they're all crunched up. There's no movement like, like that, stressed. And at the end of the day, that's your core there, isn't it? That's me. That is me. And if they're not happy, the rest of it spreads out and the rest of me isn't happy. And that's what I'm doing today. I'm getting right back to basics here. You know, get off the chains. Don't be all, all sort of stressed out and tight and can't move. This clo you know, the clothing's all about freedom. Being aware of yourself, at one with nature. That's what's going on. 2000, I stepped away from the houses and the cars and stuff. Left the light bulbs <laughs> House. But I made a vow that I wasn't gonna wear shoes. So let's get on and do some barefooting. If you think of a young child when they first begin to walk, they land in the front pad of their foot and they walk with a very, very open heart. And it looks like this. It's called skipping. I've done that for years. <laughs> I forgot how to skip. Because you do it when you're a kid, don't you? So yeah, that's you naturally, you yeah. I just do it lightly, I just go. There you go, there you go, look at you. Don't wear shoes, get out there, wake them up. Wake your feet up. Underfloor heating, we've got at home. My feet love them. Now it's like, it's, like, it's like I've kicked them out and they're roughing it. They're going, what's going on? It's like, wake up, get moving. You know, I, I, I've spoiled them. And spoiling anything isn't good, is it? Because then they forget what they're meant to be doing. It'd make, it make um, sport more interesting, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? 100 metre dash, like that? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so what are you teaching me here? Well, I'm going to get into sticking. And so now all you're going to do, come forward. Oh, is it always the same? Always the same right now, right. three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. Basically, uh, the most fun you can have with a stick. That's, that's what I've done this afternoon. Um, stick fighting, you know, stretching the back, stretching the arms, but doing it all with, with a stick. He's not conned by the modern world into buying some fancy tool to do that with. It's all there for us. How much would that stick be if you went to some well-known sports shop and they sold it as the, you know, the multi-gym stick? It's all about branding, isn't it? Alan Sugar gets hold of that and he'll, he'll make it fancy. You know, put sponge on the ends and all that. They make a fortune out of it, that's what they do. The ball, they, they've done it with a big ball, haven't they? Pogo stick was the first time, I think, when I really realised that... Someone's taking a piss here. It's not a mode of transport. I tried to do a paper round on one. Absolutely knackered. He is a modern-day caveman. And I've enjoyed it. You know, this is, this is just a little taster of it. And I'm not saying I'm going to go back to this. I'm not going to go home and say, all right, Suzanne, come on, pack up, sell the house, live in, you know, Regent's Park. It's not going to happen. I'm, I'm setting my ways and you can't go back. I'm, sh I'm pretty sure I was happy as a baby in my mum's womb. But I, I don't sort of go, I'm sick of the world. Mum, let me in. I want to go back. We 
whistling is happy. You don't whistle when you're pissed off. It's the last thing you do. In fact, you know, if someone's whistling, you know they're all right. You never see a bird and think that looks pissed off. Because it's tweeting away, it's whistling away. And whistling's associated with happiness. They're whistling whilst they work. It's definitely nicer than shouting, but I think I quite like shouting. There is a use for it. People who start work early, bin men, could they use it? Scaffolders, they're another loud lot, aren't they? They love it, they love shouting, swearing and everything. At least they could have swear words with this, and little kids probably wouldn't know. It could be like a scaffolding language, so they could have F and Jeff all they like, without mothers like that covering up the kids' ears. How do you swear in this language? Is he a swear word? <laughs> <laughs> What does that mean? It's very funny. I can't explain it. <laughs> you can't explain it, but it's a bit rude. Yeah. I just go, uh <laughs> What's a right dickhead? <laughs> You're full of shit. Because I think that's all they're doing. I think they're following their, doing a bit of Spanish, but whistling it. <whistles> I'm like, oh, fuck this. I do need it. I need to get annoyed and, but maybe if I learnt it proper, I'd, I'd come up with loads of other words that I like a bit more like, you know. <laughs> that sounds a bit more angry. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs>